Uh, so, okay, so our fourth speaker <coughs> for this session is uh, Yongxia Shi from Purdue. Uh, take it away. Okay. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, all the organizers for giving me this chance uh, to share my latest, uh, latest research uh, on integrable directed polymer models. Uh, this is a joint work with Eleanor Elmer and Chris Jerigan. And let me first uh, introduce this model briefly. So uh, this is one plus one dimensional directed polymer models. And this model is basically uh, uh, saying that uh, there is a random path and this random path is on V2, but the random path can only uh, go either up or right. And the random environment gives random ways on each uh, age, including the boundary of the first quadrant. So as you can see in this picture, uh, UX is the horizontal edge ways inside the first quadrant with its right endpoint X. And VX is the vertical edge ways uh, inside the first quadrant with its top uh, vertex X. And R1, R2 means the uh, boundary weights. So, uh, <clears throat> so the basic assumption of all those random environments are that the pairs of UX, VX for all X inside the first quadrant, they're IID. And meanwhile, the uh, boundary weights R1, R2, and UX, VX, they are independent. So they might not be identically distributed. And UX, VX themselves might not be uh, independent as well. And they might not be identically distributed. <clears throat> and then we define the weight of the path. It's just the multiplication of the weight of the uh, ages that on the path. And, and then we can define the quenched polymer distribution, uh, which is just depend on the weight of the path. And there is a normal other factor, which is also called uh, partition function. It's the sum of all the paths that start from zero and ends and end. And this is uh, the basic setting. And we want to study the model that has uh, such property, which is called increment stationary property. And this property is very useful so that we can compute many things such as free energy and so on. And let's first uh, take a look at uh, the recurrence relation of the, uh, of the partition function. It's given as follows. This, you can compute that very simple by, the, by uh, doing the last step of the uh, path. It could either be going right or going up. And if you take the ratio of the partition function, and we call this R1 and R2 to be the increments, and those increments also satisfy the recurrence relation listed below. And uh, by giving the uh, relation this way, we are able to ask ourselves a question is that uh, what kind of probability, probability distribution of uh, U, V, and the boundary condition R1 and R2 such that in this way, uh, the increment of the partition function grows uh, in, in the stationary way uh, stated here. That means the joint distribution of R1 and R2 has the same distribution of R1 and M, M minus one, R2 and M minus one. And, and you, can, you can also build this as a corner flipping thing. So R1 and M, M minus one and R2 and minus one N is the bottom left corner. And R1 and M N and R2 and M N forms the top right corner. So you flip the bottom left to top right and remains their joint distribution the same. <clears throat> okay. Um, so next is uh, given that we want this kind of increment stationary property, and with some other assumption that if we assume that V is a function of U, so H here is a deterministic function and V is uh, H of U, then it, it, uh, it is proved by, uh, let me see, uh, it's proved by Chalman and Noack that there are only four kinds of uh, integrable polymer models that has the stationary increment pro pro property, which is listed below. So there are four models, log gamma, uh, three weak, beta and inverse beta. And there are many uh, people and many papers uh, have done uh, the research on those four uh, models. And the log gamma polymer was uh, introduced by Cipollini and the strict weak polymer was uh, introduced in two independent papers. The first one was given by Crowin, Cipollini and Shin. And the second one was given by O'Connell and Ortman. The beta polymer was introduced by uh, Barraquan and Corbin. And the inverse beta polymer was introduced by Thierry and Ladol. And now that we have found the, uh, a, a common property that uh, all the four models share, so we want to do something 
that can be applied to all the models. And let's see what the free energy is. So the free energy is basically just the natural log of the partition function. And here we have three ways to define our partition function. The first way is uh, it's given just by the previous slide. So we, we, we can see that R1 and R2, they each have a parameter lambda. So mu and mu here are constants. And R1 and R2 are just uh, a, a random variable and has a single parameter lambda. If you set their parameter to be the same, and that means the polymer has increment stationary property. So which we call this V lambda is the partition function in the stationary increment polymer. And the second one is, of course, you can let the parameter of R1 and the parameter for R2, those two parameters are different. This is lambda one and that is lambda two. So you can also define the partition function with two different parameters. Although in this polymer, it does not uh, satisfy the stationary increment property, but it's still worth in doing uh, the, some research on it because there is a very, very important uh, property of this polymer, which I will uh, talk about la later. And the last uh, partition function is just the polymer without any boundary condition, which you can view as uh, the path starts from one one. So the boundary does not make any uh, influence, okay? So, so the first property that I want to uh, talk about the free energy is the law of flux numbers. And basically uh, the, the, free, the, the free energy of the polymer without any boundary conditions and the free, and the free energy uh, in the sta stationary increment models that has, uh, they, 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 they both have the law of flux numbers. And the limiting speed can also be uh, explicitly computed. So a gamma lambda is just the expectation of the log of V lambda, which by the stationary increment property, you can split them into two parts. And that's the, just the expectation of log R1 affecting the log R2. So because we know this, the distribution of R1 and R2, so we can compute explicitly this value for all of our models. And uh, the limiting speed for the partition function without any boundary condition is the infimum of all the gamma lambda. So V here means the domain of the lambda. And the second property of free energy is the weak limit. So I call this weak limit rather than separate limit theorem. It's because uh, this scaling parameter is not uh, diffusive. And also the weak limit is a truth of rhythm GUE, which is not Gaussian. And this also implies that um, the, those, those class of polymer models are belong to the KVD universality class. Okay. And the third property of free, free energy that I want to talk is just uh, the, the, the property of the free energy in multi-parameter multi models, which I just mentioned before, that although the, in this model, uh, the polymer does not have stationary increment property, but it has a very strong uh, e uh, equality that you can compute the log moment generating function by doing the integral of the, of, of the shape function uh, gamma lambda. And this is a, a key tool in our proof, in fact. <clears throat> Okay, uh, any questions so far? All right, cool. So our uh, main result is about the right tail motor deviation estimation of the free energy. And it just looks in this way. We have both the upper bound and the lower bound, and we are very glad that we can get the leading term the same. And uh, with the only assumption that Edmund away from the boundary. And there's one thing that I want to mention here is that the skinning part here, sigma, is a function, it's a homogeneous function of the degree one third, of course, because uh, the weak limit, the weak limit implies that the skinning parameter should be into the one third. And also this, uh, this uh, skating sigma has another meaning that two times uh, sigma cube is the second derivative of the shape function exactly at the minimum, which the second derivative over lambda at the minimum point. So, <clears throat> and which also can uh, Im imply that the sigma function is a homogeneous function of order uh, one third. <clears throat> so this is upper and lower bound for the free energy in the, uh, without the boundary condition, but we, are, we can also do some uh, side results like the, the right tail water deviation, uh, deviate estimation for 
the free free energy for multi-parameter models. Uh, so the leading term is a little bit different, uh, and that makes sense because uh, the free energy in the multi-parameter models should be bigger than the free energy without any boundary condition because the boundary weight is always uh, it's, it's always likely to be bigger than the weight inside the first quadrant. You can see this from the definition the definition of the distribution here. So R1 and R2 should always be bigger than U, not exactly bigger, but in the distribution sense, the distribution is more likely to be larger than the distribution of U here. So, so that's why our upper bound for the uh, free energy in the multi-parameter model is bigger. And another interesting result in our, our project is that we studied uh, the, the, the property of the exit time. The exit time means that uh, when the random path exit the boundary. So if the, exit uh, so if the random path exit the horizontal boundary at k zero, and then we define exit uh, time as positive k. And if x exit the vertical boundary at zero k, then we define the exit time as negative k. So the, the main result is stated as follows. And we split this into two cases. The first case is that the parameter, the single parameter lambda. So now that I use a single parameter here, that means we are in the stationary increment uh, polymer case. That means R1 and R2, the boundary, uh, uh, the, the, the boundary weights share the same uh, pr uh, parameter. So in, so in this case, if the parameter lambda is close to the local minimum, lambda mean means that uh, the local minimum point of the shape function. So if the parameter is close to the local minimum, then the, the path should neither go too close to the horizontal boundary nor to the vertical boundary. It should exit the boundary really quick. How quick is about of order n plus n to the two thirds, okay? And in the other hand, if the parameter is away from the minimum, then there, are, there should be some uh, big attraction of the boundaries that will make the path go either to the horizontal or to the vertical boundary. So if lambda is smaller than the local minimum, which means the vertical boundary weight is heavier, it's much heavier. And that means the path is more likely to go up rather than right. So that means the, 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 the first step of the path that goes right is not likely. And similarly, the, if, if, if lambda is bigger, then that means horizontal boundary is, is more attractive. So the reverse, uh, result also holds. And well, I think that's uh, all I want to share today. Um, thanks for listening.